Hello, everyone. This is Bethlehem Artfield. Welcome to the podcast Journey to Ethiopia with a story. In this program, I'll be conducting an interview with、uh, an Ethiopian writer, translator, and publisher for the first time in this podcast. This special program is to commemorate International Translation Day, which is on 30th of September. Our guest for this program, Roman Tol Debrahan, has written two books. She translates poems from Amharic to English, and she owns Romanat Publisher in Addis Ababa. Right.、Um, hello, Roman. Thank you for being our guest in this special episode commemorating International Translation Day.、Uh, thank you for inviting me, Beth.、Uh, hello. <laughs> Hi.、Um, Can you please briefly、um, tell our listeners about your background, particularly、um, your linguistic background? Sure, with pleasure. And、um, I am bilingual.、Um, mm-hmm. I mean, because my mum is British, English, and my dad is Ethiopian.、Mm-hmm. But I was born and raised in Ethiopia,、okay. so my first language is actually Amharic.、Mm-hmm. But I always communicate with my mum in English. Right. And, and as an adult, I've lived in London for several years.、Mm-hmm. So I'm、um, quite literally、um, bilingual, although、oh. Amharic is my first language. Right.、Um, I recently read your book, Reflections. It's a, a small book <laughs> a collection of poet,、uh, poems, and、um, mm-hmm. I found your poems very poignant. Um, please tell us about your writing process. Do you think in English language, or do you sometimes find yourself translating what you want to say from the Amharic? And I'm asking this because for me, Amharic is my emotive language. I find myself lapsing to Amharic whenever I'm upset. I even scold、yeah. my children and my husband, who is a foreigner and doesn't speak Amharic, in Amharic because、mm. that's what I love、yeah. to when I am、mm. quite emotional. So how how is it for you?、Mm, in the writing process, it's quite、uh, mixed up.、Mm. What、um, what inspiration I get? The ins-、mm, what inspires me?、Mm. I think my my ma- main、uh, thinking language is Amharic. Right.、Uh, and I was thinking,、um, how if I think in Amharic, but I also find myself thinking in English because the poetry comes from inspiration. To be honest with you, I don't write it; just it's from some kind of feeling that I've felt for a word or、mm-hmm. or some、uh, some instance or some scenery I have observed.、Mm-hmm. And the words、um, for poetry, I find it. Easier to write in English, although I have taught myself and co- coached myself to also write in Amharic,、um, which I find more challenging.、Mm-hmm. Uh, and I wonder sometimes, what do you dream in, for example? Right. What, yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because、uh, are my dreams、uh, in Amharic or are my dreams、uh, in English? I I I wonder、mm-hmm. all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, although predominantly, I think at the forefront of my mind it, it's Amharic,、um, yeah. and、uh, putting those Amharic words into English. Okay. In no, in, in, I mean in the writing process, if it's for a purpose, like what I wrote in Amharic was、um, a fairy tale for teenagers、mm-hmm. in Amharic. Right. But、um, uh, it, it had a purpose.、Mm-hmm. I had an aim. And I had to to teach myself how to to write in Amharic, even second nature.、Uh, I mean, it's it's relatively easier. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's very impressive. Um, and、uh, how do you choose、uh, which Amharic poems to translate into English? Um, again, I、uh, poem poetry is more. Uh, for feelings and for beauty,、uh, it's the, the the sense it gives you. A poem, as such, doesn't I don't believe teaches us. So, I mean, it's not like a lecture. It's the feeling. So, if I get 
the same feelings I have, like the inspirations I get when I write my poetry mm. from reading an Amharic poem, mm. I get tempted to translate it into, in, into English. Mm-hmm. And um, if it resonates to my heart, right. I find the words mm. for it. Mm-hmm. and translate it into English though as you said um, some uh, our emotive as, as Amharic is our first language my emotive language is Amharic though uh, uh, when it so poetry is emotions yes and, um, but it's the feeling the feeling that it gives me mm-hmm. if it gives me um, a sense of aha or if it really inspires me in another way, mm-hmm. I, 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 I translate it. It's just random. There's no, there's no set um, criteria for me yeah. to translate them. It's just like what, what resonates to my heart. Do, do you feel the same way when you read a book, uh, prose, any novels? Do you feel like, oh, I, I, I want to translate this book? Do you feel like that? Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. And Definitely. have you tried Definitely. translating uh, uh, novels? Um, I attempted a few pieces of Adam Reta, but it was two, two, two um, the Amharic, some, some Amharic words are very they are to, to, bring in, to, to, <laughs> yes. to bring into the, the English context because mm-hmm. it's the culture, mm. uh, it's the minute details, especially mm. in Adam literature, mm-hmm. uh, you find very small details in our culture also. Mm-hmm. is highly um, prevalent so mm-hmm. um, uh, it, um, but I have found um, I do feel like that but then again uh, I also feel more inclined the other way around say I read a very good English novel and I say oh I wish this was in Amharic right. and that trend is actually uh, highly prevalent these days in our country. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the olden days, um, it used to be Russian literature uh, yes. that used to be translated. Mm-hmm. And I remember books from my teenage years um, that I didn't even know they were translations when I read them, only after. But these days, t- the technology has really changed um, how we perceive books and how we how we value books yes in a way yeah uh, so say there's a bestseller in the US and within 15 days somebody's translated it into Amharic which is gibberish wow just, I didn't know that <laughs> it is highly prevalent best and it's sad mm. it saddens me it really mm. breaks my heart really mm. Why? Why does it sadden you? Because um, it's a, the intentions are very good, of yeah. course. Yeah. The intentions of bringing that um, something that we don't have in our Amharic literature into the Amharic language is very good and noble. But the process of it is is we have no uh, censor these days. There's no there's no governmental uh, um, watchdog on on our books and literature on uh, on such. the quality so, um uh, uh, on the quality on the quality exactly. of so translation okay anybody can translate anything b- mm. by whim of whim and and sell a book but um, i mean it, uh, it saddens me that it's all it's market orientated it's right. not value oriented oh, okay. you know if yes. you understand what I mean yes, that, I do. that's yeah. what I'm trying to say yeah mm. okay and um what are the joys and challenges of translation in your experience how can you describe those mm, yeah finding the words but yes. in both. the yeah. joy the joy of finding a word that mm-hmm. fits is ecstasy really mm-hmm. when you find mm-hmm. a word that exactly mm-hmm. and then <laughs> And then finding the words is the most challenging aspect of it, mm-hmm. but not just the words, also the sense, yeah. the, um, the, the sense it gives, the meaning it gives mm. in the other language to bring it to either into Amharic or to take the Amharic into 
the English. Yeah, particularly um, when cultures are involved, right? Exactly, yeah. exactly, exactly. Mm. And mm. Uh, where because human nature is the same. Mm. Uh, we're we're all the same. Sadness, happiness, or our our core values as humans is the <laughs> same. But the cultural setting, the scenery, mm. the religion, r- religious stuff, mm. and those particulars of Ethiopia per yes. se yes. Uh, can be challenging to bring into the in- mm-hmm. into the English language. Yeah, I, I feel the same. In your poem entitled "My Dream by Yeats," you aptly depicted the power of poetry to resonate beyond geographical boundaries and social constructs such as culture and gender. Please tell us who your favorite international and Ethiopian poets are and why they are special to you. Mm, yeah, I have quite a few favorites, but. Um, uh, for example, uh, Yeats, of course, mm-hmm. because um, uh, his words resonate to my heart. Mm. Uh, uh, reading in English English poetry was quite an uphill struggle for me because um, I find the words quite difficult. I tried the sonnets, for example, mm-hmm. Shakespeare's sonnets. They're, they're beautiful, they're nice, but I couldn't grasp them as much as I... Mm-hmm. As Yeats spoke to my heart, so right. I um, I like Yeats, mm-hmm. and obviously f- from the classicals, Emily Dickinson is one of my favorite poets too because well she's a female to start <laughs> off with, but <laughs> and she wrote prolifically uh, her full time with in those days in the olden age. Mm. Um, where females were not supposed to, to, to even be seen in public. She was yeah. writing, hiding in her room for years and years, and I mm. admire that so much in her. Yeah. Um, and from uh, Ethiopian poets. From Ethiopia. Uh, can I also mention Lemon? Yeah, sure. From yeah. Lemon. Uh, Lemon is not bilingual like me and you, but... Uh, yeah. I, I like his poetry mm. uh, be, uh, because of the English connection, again, the mm. British connection there. Mm. But uh, Ethiopian poets, um, Gabra Christos Desta by far. I uh, think he's my, my favorite as well. <laughs> <laughs> he's yeah. my number one favorite. Yeah. Yeah. Um, again, it's picturesque. His language is so simple but beautiful. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, I compare him with it's a gay government. It's a gay government, and is a is a laureate poet, mm-hmm. and his language is a bit tough on me. Mm-hmm. It's maybe sometimes I think he's out of my league, mm-hmm. but obviously, yeah. mm, Gavra Christos by far, and Wendy Ali. Okay. Of course. Yeah, I have to find Those his work. Two. I have read the translations you made uh, by him, but I haven't uh, read any of his original uh, poems. I'd love to send you some of his poems. Ah, poetry, that would be fantastic. We, we... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. My um, dear, she... I find it really saddening that the rest of the world does not acknowledge or appreciate the richness of Ethiopian literature written in local mm-hmm. languages uh, because of language barriers, right? So, um, but more importantly, uh, most of the second and third generation of Ethiopian in Ethiopians in the diaspora will not have the chance to appreciate it because they are most likely unable to read in any of the Ethiopian languages. How do you feel about this and what do you think should be done? Yeah, um, the, this generation, especially, as you say, the second and third generation of a lot of diasporas, in, um, uh, even in Ethiopia, mm-hmm. you don't, we don't have to go really that far. Mm-hmm. Uh, the modern, the modern Ethiopian um, uh, children that I see these days, uh, as I was uh, alluding to you earlier, because of technology as well. Yes, the the sense of. Um, the value of books and the value of literature in this generation, I think, is very, very shallow. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, 
I feel sad that they don't know their their culture and their language, mm-hmm. and they can't appreciate them. I I absolutely feel very sad. So we need to translate for them, yes. or to get them back to teach. Mm-hmm. To teach them their own language in right. simple ways, yeah. not make it too too hard for for them, mm-hmm. and associate with them. But as you said, uh, as you said, because of the uh, Amharic language, we have uh, big authors in Egypt. I mean, very classic authors, but yes. our language barrier yeah. hasn't enabled them to be acknowledged mm-hmm. internationally, mm-hmm. Um, unlike other African authors yes. uh, uh, who write in English. Yeah. The Nigerian Chinua Chaba is one big example I can give you, but we we have our, our Chinua Chobas in Ethiopia. I believe that, mm. but the language is a barrier, but mm. it's also something to be cherished and kept so this is the yeah. dilemma that yeah. i don't know how you what your feelings are on this but uh, i I, I feel life. like we have to start a, a movement uh, some kind of uh, <laughs> advocacy for um young children to 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 encourage them to read in amharic or you know appreciate the language and for those who don't have that chance to translate the books for them but uh, yeah the, I, i think this is a good start uh, let's see <laughs> Thank you very much <laughs> once again for being our guest in this special episode prepared in commemoration of the International Translation Day. Um, can you, Before we log off, can you please read us two poems, uh, one written by you and uh, another one uh, is your translation. That would be lovely. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, it's It's a pleasure to have talked to you. Uh, of course, with pleasure. I'd love to read you a couple of po- of the poems you mentioned. Great. As often as I do, I opened the window, the stars that glisten upon the skies of Asco. After hours, when daylight's gone, we're nowhere to be seen. Up above the treetop, where cuckoos nest, when all's asleep, no, no. There was no shine, there was no moon. It was pitch black, the dead of night, complete utter dark. All of a sudden I felt so little, smaller than a speck, specks of dust that I'll turn to soon when I die. Felt so insignificant. No, no star, no moon, no sun or light would ever do, though a tiny, tiny comfort I drew from maybe specks of me would one day make it to you. Untitled. Silence by Wendye Ali. It brews in our heart. It bubbles and boils. Unmans our passion. Unstraightens our neck. It shivers our soul. It's shrouded in black. Writ large on our face. To grasp it. To know it. Discover its why. And know its how. Then lead to salvation. Welcome redemption, dawn star smiling, like children flash, sudden as lightning. To really know things, we have to be patient and wait in the ton weight of silence. Let dead words grow wiser than shrewd. Yes, silence agrees with the word. It says quiet. Don't dare ask me, why so mute? Silence agrees with the word. We shiver with fear. We had a little morning. Everything shows on our face, inner peace, gone. Clothes covers wide open, the lines on our forehead, the mischief and secrets, our body and soul in one piece, wise just to keep mum. Much like me, silence agrees with the word. Silent, be quiet, don't ask why. I'm hushed, even if you do, I wouldn't understand. Thank you for listening. Please read the discussion points under the description of this episode. We would like to hear your views on these points and any other observation you may have. If you'd like to listen to more stories as soon as they are released, please subscribe to this channel. Until the next story, goodbye.